Hey everyone, Douglas here, and today I want to take a look at Squeeze Metrics GEX, or Gamma Exposure Data, which is uh, what you're seeing right now on your screen. And then in the rest of the video, I'll give a brief overview of exactly what this is and why I keep a close eye on it and how I incorporate it into my overall macro analysis. But uh, before we get going, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you won't miss any updates going forward. And if you find this video specifically helpful or quite helpful, uh, make sure you give it a like uh, on your way out. So there's been a lot of talk recently about the growth of the options market and the implication that it has had on hedging activity of market makers in the option market uh, space as a, or I'm sorry, in the equity space as a whole. And while there are many different facets to that entire discussion and many important ways to understand the impact of dealer hedging, one of the most important data points and thankfully freely available data points thanks to squeeze metrics is the total gam exposure or gex of the s p options market now if you're not terribly familiar with all of this uh, and, and, and and what's going on i'll give a brief overview here of exactly what hedging activity is so let's start with some uh, some basics hopefully you're already familiar with what an options is if you're not you might want to check out some uh, some intro videos to options trading and there's a plethora of them on youtube but i'm going to assume you at least have that part of this down so when an options contract is bought or sold most often on the other side of that uh, options contract and, and that trade is a market maker, someone who is providing liquidity for the options market with the goal not of taking a directional bet on the underlying asset as you might be, but instead making a small profit on each trade acting as the middleman between buyers and sellers in that market. And the key here is that the market maker wants to get rid of any, as much as it can, uh, directional risk of the underlying asset associated with that options contract. And they accomplish this task through an activity called delta hedging. With an option, when the underlying asset moves up or down $1, there's a calculated delta of the options contract that dictates what the expected move is of the contract given the dollar move of the underlying asset. Now, this can be easily enough hedged away by simply buying or selling underlying asset, uh, buying or selling the underlying asset, depending on the options contract to put or call. The problem is there's a first derivative of delta called gamma. The delta value itself will change as the underlying asset moves in price. And it's this gamma that must be dynamically hedged by market makers that has a very large or potentially very large impact on the equity space. So what you're looking at here on the screen right now is the gamma exposure reading. Now, if everything I just rattled off regarding hedging activity is still a bit much to wrap your head around, uh, I'll also link to a squeeze metrics white paper regarding the gamma exposure metric that they publish, which goes into much more detail with regards to what it is you're looking at. But the big question is, what is this gamma exposure telling us and how do I use it in my overall analysis? Essentially, when the overall gamma exposure of the market is positive, market makers will hedge their position in such a way that it will suppress volatility by buying into dips and selling into rallies. Conversely, when GEX flips negative, the, uh, the opposite becomes true, where hedging activity will exacerbate volatility by selling into dips and buying into rallies. And again, if you're looking for a bit more of an in-depth detail look at this, check out that white paper in order to give you more details. But that is what the GEX reading is. Now, even if you're still not tracking 100% on exactly what it is or what's going on here and all this hedging activity, that's okay. Here's the important takeaway. When you say a positive GEX reading, statistically speaking, you should expect a smaller or tighter tra trading range in the S&P 500 relative to a zero or negative GEX reading. And thus, when you see a zero or negative GEX reading, you can statistically expect a larger or more volatile trading range relative to a higher positive gamma reading. Now, this isn't a directional call per se, and it's important to understand, but you can see, and, uh, and has very much been the case over the past decade or so, is that you'll see a buildup in GEX that creates a very typical market slow volatility, low grind, or low volatility grind higher, and that often ends in a sudden reversal. And this, uh, this cycle often, uh, the cycle oftentimes tracks very closely with the options expiration cycle, as you'd expect. When options expire, the market makers no longer uh, need to hedge those positions. 
And that is why I am making this video uh, today as I'm recording it. It's Tuesday night, April 20th, 2021. And this past Friday was options expiration or op, set, or op X. And it also coincides with this recent uh, recent large build that you've seen in gamma exposure and then sudden rollover. So what does this mean? First, I'm not calling for a major top here uh, or any major market sell-off uh, per se, but uh, what is quite likely and what we're kind of already starting to see as this week plays out is that the trend that we've seen over the past few weeks of, uh, of a very tight market churning ever so slightly higher is likely over for the time being. And this does open the door, admittedly, for a more severe pullback to materialize if selling uh, kind of continues to pick up here because there is a sudden void of hedging activity due to uh, due to OPEX uh, this past Friday. Now, before I wrap up this video, what I want to take a look at real quick is a chart that I put together uh, to maybe further illustrate this of, uh, of recent OPEXs or the or recent uh, option expirations over the past uh, over the past about year and a half or so. And, uh, and you can see quite often that the market either will change direction or pick up volatility around the options expiration cycle. The, uh, the classic example of this is the sell-off that occurred starting in, uh, in late February 2020 and lasted through March 23rd, 2020. Obviously, there was a major world event driving the selling, but the selling didn't really get uh, severe until the end of the February OPEX and didn't relent until March 23rd, the end of the March OPEX. And if we uh, we look back at our GEX chart here, you'll, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, as we reach the end of February, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you'll see that GEX begins to drop off as we reach the end of February and go negative into March, reinforcing the selling that we saw throughout March. Again, I'm not saying by any stretch that the sell-off like we saw last year is on the horizon, but what I am saying is that if selling starts to pick up this week, that the potential for a deeper pullback is much more likely given the fall off of gamma hedging that we've seen uh, that we've seen here recently. Now, this is just kind of a bit of a tip of the iceberg, if you will, when it comes to understanding the impact of hedging activity on the S&P, but I do hope uh, that you can see how it is a, a very powerful tool uh, in and of itself, and you can take this concept even further, uh, which is one of the things I do do in my, uh, in my updates over on my Patreon page. Um, take a look at kind of key strike zones, prices in the SPX, where we will likely see some support or resistance uh, come into play, or key levels or inflection points where we might see strong selling uh, begin to uh, begin to materialize. So if anything like that interests you, you're an active trader, active investor, you can check out my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Canon MA. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. Like I said, at the top of the video, if you're uh, new here and you like what you're seeing, um, definitely hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. And if you found this video helpful, I'd love a thumbs up. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. So uh, good trading, everyone. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.